This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Well, like all missions, it's time for post-mission cleanup and time to talk to the crew. Greetings and salutations, viewers, while I'm back here with another episode of Dragonfall, or Shadowrun Dragonfall. Almost did the opposite before in the last episode. We defeated the Humanist Organization, defeated their leader, and saved Alexander, Dietrich's nephew, and we can talk to him about it, but he, overall he appreciated our efforts, so let's talk to everyone in town. Uh, I'll only talk to a couple of people, and then we'll do the talking to everyone, so we can talk to our crew first, so... How are you doing, Elaine? Oleski Lane leans on his crutch while staring into the Berlin sky. Nothing moves but, but, but gray clouds. His faraway look is only broken when you approach. Something I can do for you. Just checking in. I appreciate that for your making, but you've got some big shoes to fill around here. Uh, I try. Try harder. Time is not on your side. Nothing stays secret for long in the F-State. The flux demands transparency. The truth will always get out, and the truth about Monica's death is now on the breeze, flowing through the streets of Berlin. Next comes visitor, visitors of uncertain intent. Some just maybe just bottom feeders, sniffing after the leavings of the dead. Others may, will be hunters looking to exploit a leaderless tribe. You still think us leaderless? The old troll squints at you as if looking through a jeweler's tro loop. Not sure yet. There are time, trying times ahead. Seen it before, too many times before. Anything else? I want to hear more about the war. <coughs> Lane grumbles and massages phantom pains in a synthetic leg. Damn it, why won't the world just let an old soldier fade away, like MacArthur promised? You were in the military? Where did you serve? Back home with the Finnish Defense Force, Jaeger Brigade. Lane clenches and unclenches a fist, either out of repressed anger or more phantom pain. His weathered face betrays nothing. The Russians thought to come at us from the north as well as the west, through the Lapland, thinking I was weaker there. The thought They thought wrong, and the snow was painted pink on both sides of the border. I wonder if this is a ref reference to the, uh, what was it called, the White War or whatever, where Russia attacked Finland like during World War II, and Finland, even though they had to give Russia repercussions, they still wrecked them like, so badly. Like Russia suffered so many losses during that war. It was insane. You should look up on it. Tell me a bit more about the Euro War. Doubt there's much I could tell you you wouldn't have learned in schools, though you should have learned it in school. Or, yeah, anyway. Russian, uh, Russians evaded hell if I can remember why. The world was more of a mess back then than it is today, if you ask me. They attacked Poland, Finland first. Poland broke within months, opening the door into Germany. I had no contacts in Berlin back then, mind you. Can't say how bad things were here. Had battles of my own to worry about. Sorry, I won't bother you anymore about it. Thank you. Anything else? Nah, I'll be going. But we want to turn in that, uh, we want to go to that phone and turn in the information we got in the last episode. Oh, yeah, we can see how uh, Simi's doing. Simi Kim weaves an awkward dance through scattered ref refuse. Her two thin legs wobble and she keeps her footing throughout. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. She's making a reference to Annie, the, the play Annie, by the way. We could all use a little sun down here. It's not literal sun, silly. It means tomorrow will be a better day. Monica used to say something like that. When I was tired, when I was sad, when I only wanted to sleep, she would tell me that. She told me I'd forget that the pain would go away. Not unless you have, like, chronic pain or you're at a certain age and... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've lived many lives, but I've been an orphan more times than anything. It was the first story I found when I needed to get away. Anybody, anybody ever try to get you off The Sims? But I need them! Monica understood that, and Zach says they're safe. Well, Zach is a pusher, so he doesn't care if you're fixed or not. I don't know what I'd do without them. Without them, I dream, and I don't want to dream. I, want to, I don't want to remember. They help me forget. They help me to be strong and smart, and I never lose anyone. And that makes it a good thing. Can't run from your problems forever. I know. So, do you like it here in Cruz uh, Cruise Bowser? Kim turns her head as, so as not to look you in the eyes. Her posture is that of someone who fears the possible repercussions of her answer. It's good. I can get what I want from Zack Flash or Doc Escabel, and they pay me what, however I can. Monica was always nice, and Paul Imsel and the Angel is... Nice to meet, and the angel is nice to me too, usually. I know Monica's gone now, but I can still s uh, stay, right? Whatever you like. Then I want to stay, please. It's the only place I know. Let's talk another time. Alright. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you can't fix everyone in this world. And I guess you're not supposed to. Free will and all that stuff. Anyway, let's talk to the phone here. Deliver the humanist donor list. The machine accepts the data upload, and only a few moments later, a certified cred stick is spat out of the coin slot. The phone's old LCD readout displays the next. Freedom, equality, information, sh uh, the lighter, walk away. But anyway, we've got the payday for that. 
Well, let's see if uh, Dare Vine Killer is uh, doing anything right now. Probably not. How you doing, Lucy? We didn't hire you in the last mission, but uh, yeah. Lucy's uh, Lucky Strike, ra sorry, it's Lucky, I don't know why they called her Lucy. Lucky Strike raises an eyebrow at your approach. A burning cigarette dangles between the fingers of her right hand, and she holds a glass of scotch in her left. Black wire? Fancy seeing you again? Yeah, well, I was hoping that you'd want to chat. Oh? She takes a drag on her cigarette. Well, it covered me intrigued. What do you want to talk about? Been finding much work recently? Yeah, but the cr cruise in Bowser isn't the best place to do it. There aren't a ton of jobs out there if you don't have a network. You don't have people on the cr uh, cruise in Bowser? No, nope, my crew is, mit is in might. There's a lot of work out there if you can handle it, but life isn't as pleasant there as it is in the cruise in Bowser. Ba Bazer. I keep pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> Sorry. She gestures at her cigarette, the tip glowing red in the gloom. I mostly visit your lovely little Kia's between runs to restock and relax. It's a good place for that. Nice and slow-paced. It's... She pauses for a moment to search for a word. Quaint. Don't suppose you'd be interested in taking a permanent position on my team? Don't suppose I would. Like I said, I've got a team of my own. Good people who've earned my loyalty a hundred times over. I can do a little moonlighting here and there, but they wouldn't take kindly if I up and bailed on them. She takes another sip of scotch. Better that it stays like this. If you need me for a run, I'm available. You just need to pay me first. Keep saying simple and clean. Clean, simple. And yeah, we're not playing Kingdom Hearts here. Is the bartender any good? Nope. It's called Der Vine Killer for a reason. The guy behind the bar is more like a Bush League sommelier than he is a proper bartender. Knows a bit about wine when it comes to mixing drinks. He's useless. If you want a drink, I'd recommend sticking to something simple. Try ordering something with more than two ingredients and you're asking for trouble. Yeah, better call the Team Rocket on that one. So are you a wine drinker then? Me? No. Never developed a taste for it. She tilts her glass, swirling the amber liquid inside. I'm not a big fan of sweet things. Never have been. Not even when I was a kid. I've always preferred s uh, smoke. If you don't like wine, why hang out at a wine bar? Because it's usually empty in here and I don't like to be bothered. And as hopeless as the bartender is, it is tough to mess up scotch if you order it neat. Now, do you have another question or... Gotta run. See you around. Yeah, see you. But yeah, she'll never join your team. I mean, obviously, we've got our party members. Like, everyone we've got, we've got at this point. So, she's just there if you want to uh, <clears throat> uh, just have extra dialogue. Like I said, she's not in the original game. She's only in the director's edition. So. Or director's cut, I mean. I mean, same thing when you think about it. So, All right, let's uh, before we talk to everyone else in town, let's talk to this crew so we can get some more information about what's going on and uh, get some insight to our fellows, see how they're doing. Hey, Blitz. What's up? Blitz stubs out his cigarette at your approach. Blackwa, I was hoping I'd see you. Do you have any other run, run lined up for us yet? I'm strapped for cash. Don't worry, uh, let's see. Yeah, why the hell are you strapped for cash? With the amount of work we've been doing, you should be rolling in the end. What can I say, Chief? He tries on a thoroughly unconvincing smile, but immediately seems to think better of it. The ancient look on his face returns. Aw, oh, expensive taste. Expensive what we're talking here. Even if you had a raging cram habit, I'd think you'd have at least some money left. Um, expensive. Truth be told, I'm in debt. In debt? To who? He hesitates before responding. When he does, his voice carries on edge of annoyance. No offense, but this is getting a little too personal, Chief. All debts are none of your business. Eh. If some bookie sends his thugs here looking for you, it's going to become my business. So talk now. Blitz shakes his head in expiration. Oh, fine. First off, you don't need to worry about anyone coming after me. My debts ought to be a bunch of old contacts. If I won't, don't pay him, I'm going to lose him. And in this line of work, it, is smart to, it isn't smart to burn bridges. Second, before he asked, those debts are for services rendered. I was in a tight spot. I needed some help, and I threw around a lot of IOUs to get it. Third, and finally, the trouble I was in, in involved a girl. I'll tell you about it if you ask me to, but we're verging deep into personal feelings territory, so if you don't want to hear me sob over my ex-girlfriend, you'll drop the subject now. Eh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and tell me, I'm interested. Blitz meets your gaze for a moment, then looks away and sighs. Alright, where to begin? I'm at Amelia and Dragon Kip. She was the first person who ever had more important, was more, ever more important to me than myself. I was crazy about it, Chief. To this day, she's the only person I've ever met who could out, out deck me, and the real kicker is that she wasn't even a deck of all trade. There was nothing she wasn't good at. I ought to dabble in rigging, but Amelie, that girl could pick up anything that set her mind to. That reminds me of Bridge over Terabithia. We all know that, how that ended up. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, sounds like a hell of a girl. She was. She just made things rot. 
No matter how stupid I was, no matter what I got myself into, she made it wrong. I don't think much of many people, Chief. Emotional attachments aren't really my thing. Love seems like a diluted word these days, so I won't waste it on Emily. Let's just say she was important to me. And then I lost her. I didn't know what ha was happening. It came out of nowhere. One day, she was just gone, along with most of my decking gear. The only explanation was a handwritten note on old-fashioned paper. Leave me alone. That was it. Been together for years, and that was all she left me. Thought in this beat-up old cyber deck. Naturally, I freaked. We had our share of arguments, and we never had a huge blowout or anything. I can't think of anything to drive her to do a thing like that. Mostly, I felt hurt, so I searched for her in the real world and in the Matrix. And when that turned up nothing, I started tapping my contacts. And that was when I started racking up debt. <laughs> so, and so, did you find her? No, she's gone, Blackwire, without a trace. I looked high, I looked low, I poked into everything I could have, think of, and my contacts did the same. He shakes his head. She's gone, Chief. At this point, I've accepted that, but I still have to repay the debts. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that you've given up so easily. There must be some place you haven't looked. He blinks. I don't know, Blackwell. I really did look everywhere. A great personal cost. If she means that much to you, you owe it to yourself to try. Yeah, yeah, you won't be wrong. Uh, he shakes his head. Fuck. I thought I'd done with this, but you're what? With some kind of closure, I'm never going to be at peace with this. Thanks for the talk, Chief. I'll let you know how it goes. You do that. Good luck. <laughs> you have any other dialogue, or is that it? Uh, as you approach Blitz, he gives you an easy smile. Hey, Chief, what's up? Any thoughts about the last run you'd like to share? Never been a big fan of polyclubs in general, let alone a bunch of swan-like humanos. Uh, how an idiot like Stahl could attract so many followers is beyond me. Hey, dude, like... Like, if you have the charisma, I mean, even serial killers have, uh, and crazies like, like Marilyn Mon or Marilyn Manson, for example, or, uh, stuff like that. It's, I don't know, man, the human mind is strange. On the plus side, he's dead now, so that's good. He shrugs. I don't know, boss, if you're hoping for something more profound, I'd like, I'd talk to one of the others. Talk to you later, Blitz. So he's looking for a girl, huh? He got, a. Uh, his stuff got snatched and he still cares for her. Hmm. Anyway, let's, uh. Talk to Dante. You look down to see a pair of bright eyes set in a scruffy looking uh, face looking back up at you. Dante, Monica's old dog. Looking down at those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. Uh, on some instinctive level, you must know that his master is gone. Dante lets out a small whine that rubs his head against your leg. Oh, I guess the same dialogue every time. Play dead. It seems that he doesn't know that one. Sit. He sits. Pet him. Woof. <laughs> Buzz your girlfriend. Woof. No. Hey, Dietrich. If it came through for me, boss, if you ever need anything for me, anything at all, you can call on me. I'll come running. How's, Alex uh, how's Alexander holding up? He's a good kid, that uh, nephew of mine. Give him some time and he'll shake Stahl's programming. It might take a while, but he'll adjust to life here in the Crescent Bazaar. In the meantime, I found a good home for him. Samuel's agreed to take him in. Is that wise? Samuel's employers have no love for human humanists. Most of them don't even like humans. Best thing for a kid will learn through inversion. If he stays with Samuel's group, he'll have no chance but uh, choice but to interact with metahumans. Soon enough, he'll learn they're no different than anyone else. First few days will be rough, no question, but he'll make it through. Come out on the other side a better man for it. He seems like a tough kid. I don't doubt that you're right. Teacher claps you on the shoulder. You're a good man, boss. On the other th uh, things, remember when I was telling you back before we climbed into the van? Yeah, you're saying that the Dragon Slayer was happy and that you've been given a reward? That's right. Thanks to our... Thanks to our no, it's not mince words. Heroic actions back in that vine pit, the Dragon Slayer seen fit to grant me his favor. His grin widens. And now that I know what that means, what can I do with it and what I can do with it? Well, well, don't keep me in suspense. He gestures at the ground near his feet. This. As you watch, the spot that Dietrich is pointing at begins to glow. Lines of force spread out in a scintillating web, and a feeling of raw power suffuses your body. I've just torn open a channel between myself and the Dragon Slayer. That power that you feel is his power, poured through the ether and into that spot. If you're familiar with ley lines, it's the same basic concept. I consecrate a patch of ground, and as long as I stand at that spot, all my magic gets stronger. He crosses his arm over his chest. Not bad, huh? Yeah, you basically create a ley line wherever you want, so you can always... Uh, keep Dietrich's power at improved if you just set him in one spot and just kind of buff everyone and all this other stuff. So that's a pretty good ability. So, What about another mage or shaman? Could someone else benefit from one of those channels too? 
He shrugs. Don't see why not. Like I said, it's basically a key late line. As long as you're on the Dragon Slayer's good side, I don't see why you couldn't use it. My idol, he isn't stingy with his gifts. Anyway, boss, I want to keep fiddling with this, learning to properly control it, and I'm sure that you're going to got things to do as well. You take care of whatever else you need doing, and by our next run, I'll be ready to use it. Sounds good. Take care, Dietrich. You too, boss. And we can talk to him again about just the general uh, uh, interest about the mission. Dietrich greets with his familiar wry smile. Like, well, what's new? I'm curious, Dietrich. Why did you switch from floating a ba uh, fronting a band to running the shadows? Honestly, working the stage is getting boring, boss. Spitting and screaming at the world was fine and good when I was a kid, but it just didn't do it for me anymore. The Dragon Slayer wanted me to fight a real enemy, so I left the band behind and I turned to the shadows. He shrugs. I don't know, guess I figured that'd be the best way to find one. Considering current events, I'd say that you're not wrong about that. Yeah, I guess not. Feels kinda daunting, truth be told. It, but it's all it's exciting all the same. I've been looking for a worthy adversary for a while now. It's kinda satisfying having a white veil to chase. How long have you been looking for a real enemy? He shrugs. Not too long, ever since I took down the last one. The last one? Of course, I might be able to sit around feeling pleased with myself if I follow the creator or the moon main, but the dragon slayer ain't that kind of idol. If I'm not drinking, I'm fighting. If I'm not doing either of those things, I'm looking for a bigger, better fight to get in next time. Teacher produces a flask from his jacket pocket and raises it in salute. It's a remarkably simple code to live by. Who was the last one? Gang boss, a great big orcus bastard called the Vajshvind, led the local chapter of the Horde. I've had my sights set on him and his for a while. That hurt, they'd hurt a lot of people, and I figured they'd pose a challenge. Wasn't wrong about that, but I took him out all the end. You know, you don't do a lot of attacking stuff in the game, Dietrich. You're more of a buffer support character than anything, but... Dietrich, when does this pattern end? Well, boss, the way I figured it'll end when I pick a fight that I can't defend. He smiles sadly. Might be this one. Might be the next one. It'll be hard to top a great dragon. But that's the way the Dragon Slayer vents it, and who am I to refuse him? Abruptly turns away. That's enough talk for today, boss. Besides, you've got other things to do, I'm sure. Thanks, Dietrich. And we can talk to him one more time about the mission. Oh, never mind. Uh, okay, I've got nothing more to s I've got nothing more to say, boss. Let's talk about this run. Take care of him. You can hit me up again later if you want to talk. I should have asked him about the mission first and then about the Dragon Slayer. Eh, it's not a big deal. Alright, let's see. Don't need to go in the stash. We'll have to go do it. We'll do the mission computer in a second, so. As you approach, Iger turns to face you. Your rifle has been field stripped and is lying in pieces on a sheet of butcher paper. Arranged in a neat row on the edge of the paper are bottles of copper solvent, bore cleaner, and, and lighter fluid. I feel a sleet of returns. What do you need? Uh, any thoughts about the last run? Uh, after all that mor moral ambiguity that we've been wading through, hitting Humanus was incredibly satisfying. What they had planned, it makes my blood boil just thinking about it. The thought of Stahl lying dead on the ground brings a smile to my face. I hope that he enjoys rotting in hell. You said that you had concerns about me. I'd like you to voice them. She shrugs. All right, if that's what you want. You're green, Vakfire. Too green to lead this team. That's my professional assessment, and yeah, I'm concerned about the situation. You can alleviate these concerns by doing your job and doing it well. Those are the only things that have fixed this. Is This is time. I'm not going to let history repeat itself, Vakfire. That won't happen on my watch. Igar, I thought we were past this. You said that you don't... Let's see. No, yeah. Igar, I thought we were all past this. You said that you don't blame me for Monica's death. I don't. Uh, that's not the history I was talking about. Let's just say that I had bad luck with under-experienced teammates, and we leave it at that. Uh, so, was there is something else that you want to talk about, or can I get back to cleaning my rifle? I'd like to hear about your time in the uh, KSK. She shakes her head. No, not in the habit of sharing of war stories, Blackfire. Not with the people who've never s who never served. What do you think? Uh, what, you think I wouldn't understand? Not, no, it isn't that. It's be, you've been under fire before, you get it. But I don't share your war stories with civilians. Maybe a shadow runner, but you were never a soldier. It doesn't have to be a war story. I just want a better idea who I'm running with. She looks at you in the eye for a moment, evaluating. Finally, the shrug. she shrugs. All right, Backfire, you win. I owe everything to my time in the KSK, from my street name on down. So you tell me what you want to know, and we'll see where it goes. So tell me how you got your street name. Blackfoot and I was in basic training. A fellow recruit made a vulgar joke at my expense. He said that it reminded him of the north face of the Eiger in the Bernese Alps. Huge, mutable, and dangerous to climb. His tone led to little doubt as to what sort of climbing he had in mind. 
Hey, uh, you know, he's a man of culture. I respect him. I think that he's trying to pro proposition me in his clumsy way, poking me in front of the other recruits to try and provoke a reaction. She shrugs. Anyway, he got one. I broke three of his ribs, and the name stuck. He probably said it was totally worth it. Eh, this serves him right. I re regard you with a critical eye. You might actually mean that, but you may just be trying to get on my good side. Eh... Well, I have to admit, your reaction does sound a bit extreme. She shakes her head. My reaction wasn't extreme. It was necessary. If I had broken that twit's ribs, the name Iga wouldn't have meant a difficult sexual conquest of whole barracks full of recruits. That's what I would have meant to them. From that point on, my whole accomplishments be damned. Thanks to the, what I did, my new name meant the troll who doesn't take shit from anyone. Instead, it's a name I'm proud to go by, and I've hung onto it ever since. Iga pauses for a moment and then looks to you in the eye. A bit of advice, Vagvaya. If anyone ever puts you in a position that he put me in, if he demeans you in front of your unit, whatever his intent, the appropriate response is to put the person down. Hard. Quite out on the field, and then will kill you faster than losing the respect of your team. By that logic, I should have broken your ribs out and Monica died. In your place, I would have. She looks you up and down, appraising you. Not that you've succeeded if you tried, but in terms of saving face, I would have done wonders. In all seriousness, Akvai, I'm sorry that I put you in that position. I shouldn't have, and I acknowledge that. She straightens. Need anything else, or can I get back to prepping for our next run? Uh, who is in command? Metzger. Best leader I've ever had the pleasure of serving under. Her face clouds. He was a hell of a man. But he went down with the rest of the team. Everyone but me. Uh, tell me about your team, or what happened to the team. She shakes her head. Oh no, that's one story I won't be telling. They died, that's all you need to know. Well, how about the team in general? Tell me about your team. She nods. Fair enough. I guess that you've undone. There were eight of us, two commando squads working together as a single unit. Schmidt and Lang were combat directors. Wolf was our rigger, a combat engineer. Feischer handled demolitions. Braun was a medic. And the rest of us, Metzger, Kruger, and myself, were weapons experts. Our missions were extra, uh, extraterritorial, technically illegal, but important enough to justify the risk. We had been sent across the border into Poland. The Russian Mafia had set up a cottage industry and human trafficking all on the Old Nice line. It was our job to disrupt. Now, if you have uh, etiquette security, you can ask her some more information. All this extra dialogue. If you don't have it, it won't, it won't bust her storyline or anything like that. It's just a way to get extra dialogue since I don't have it. But if you did, you would have said, that sounds more like police action than a military operation. Would the GCS, GSG usually handle that kind of thing? But anyway, go on. We are a good team. Experience. We went through a lot together. We chopped up a lot of kills. In our own way, I'd like to think that we did some good. Thanks, Iger. Was there something else that you want to talk about, or can I get back to cleaning my rifle? No more questions. Thank you, Iger. She turns back to the disassembled components of her rifle. Should thank you, Sita. Good luck. All right, and glory. Let's see, if, see if we can break through that cold facade. For the first time since you met her, Glory's expression seems to brighten. It's subtle, but it's there. You're sure of it. Backfire, a pleasure as always. Need anything from me? Uh, let's see. Any thoughts of the last run? I have no strong feelings about the run one way or the other. Humanists, of course, a whole organization, but then so is every other target we run against. To say that they deserved it would be redundant. She pauses for a moment to consider. That said, I'll admit that I do enjoy a certain sense of satisfaction thinking about Stella's head breaking apart, so there's that. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. If I didn't know any better, I think you were warming up to me. She studies your face for a moment before responding. I suppose that you might say that. I don't talk to many people, Vakvaya. It just doesn't uh, seem to be worth the effort. I don't I don't feel much anymore. Not since. She caresses the chrome on her forearm with a hand made of articulate, articulated steel. This. Yeah, and uh, I think I mentioned before about in Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, stuff like that. If you put more chrome by, you lose your humanity, so you become more cold like a machine. And then you could obviously go full bot if you... Uh, although in Shadowrun, I think it's the same as Cyberpunk. I think it beca basically become an NPC if you run out of humanity. So, if that's true, why are you still talking to me? I suppose because you've shown an interest and because you haven't let me push you away. She locks eyes with you. Her expression is blank. I don't want to mislead you, Buckfire. I don't feel anything. Not warmth or friendship or even trust. But I can appreciate the effort you're making. If something new, it's worthy of ex exploring. Uh, how are you doing, Glory? Golden as always, Buckfire. No problems here. Are you ready to uh, tell me about that chrome you're sporting? I'm getting that, Blackfire. You don't have to give me some time. The answers will come when they do. You said things went bad when you turned 14. I'd like to keep talking about that. She stares at you, for her face expressionless. No, I'd rather not. Why not? Because I don't see a reason to. The memories are unpleasant, and dredging them up doesn't serve any real purpose. 
You're wrong about that. The last time we talked, it had an impact on you. That's the reason enough to continue. She pauses a moment to consider your words, a troubled look on her face. I suppose that's true. Feeling discomfort is better than feeling nothing at all. Was it, uh, I would, uh, I've, uh, what was that, uh, Free says in Batman, uh, Batman the Animated Series, rest in peace, uh, uh, uh voice of Batman, so, um, if, uh, was about, uh, Oh no, it was about to, uh, feeling the warmth of a cool winter, a warm day on his cheek. I'd kill for that or something like that. All right, here's the deal, Blackwire. I'm going to talk. You listen. When I'm done, I'm done. No complaints and no arguments, and we'll see what happens. Deal? Ah, uh, deal. Right. The thousand meter stare creeps back into Glory's eyes. A moment later, she locks, uh, locked away in her own head again, revealing memories that she's long since fil filed away. So, a few days after my 14th birthday, I began to experience magically. Uh, wait, you're magically active? Yeah, she's a wizard? You're a wizard, Harry. I was. Glory gestures at her cyberware riddled body. Not anymore. Yeah, if you have more cyberware in your body, you lose your essence and you can't have. And the lower essence you have, the less your magic is. So you could be a cyberware wizard, but you'd be a really bad wizard because. Or magic user because your spells wouldn't be very potent. So. There's another, there's another long pause and Glory becomes more animated. Anyway, I turned 14 and I awakened. I don't remember how my parents found out about it anymore. I think that my dad caught me playing with a tiny city spirit that a cook said of a pile of garbage, something like that. With everything that happened afterwards these days are kind of a blur. What I do remember is my father's response to the revelation that this little girl was a witch, a hex. He beat the living shit out of me with his fists and then his belt and then a claw hammer that he grabbed out of his toolbox. A claw hammer? Jesus. After the while, my mother was screaming and flailing at him. She took a couple of looks with the hammer too. Ugh, it's a miracle that you survived. I'm just lucky, I guess. So finally, after what he what felt like an hour, Dad stopped turning, turning me, tuning me up with a hammer. I had a broken ribs, a busted arm. I couldn't see out of my left eye, and my entire right side was covered with one giant bruise. I was bleeding all over the place, making a real mess of the carpet. The old bastard spat on me, his bleeding crying daughter. He spat on me and told me that I was this terrifying here, the devil's whore, and he kicked me out of the house. As I was crawling away, my father told me that if he or any of his crews and bitter, bitter brothers ever saw me again, they'd treat me as the Berlin chapter treats the enemies of God. If you're not familiar with how the Chris Richards here in Berlin deal with heretics, it's decidedly less pretty than what my dad and his buddies did to their victims. I got the hint, and the next morning I hitched a ride out of Stuttgart. You're a human girl, presumably with an ID. Why didn't you go to the hospital? Oh, I did, but not in Stuttgart. If I went to a local hospital with that kind of injuries that Dad gave me, there'd be questions, and I couldn't afford to stay in town any longer than I had to. Even if my dad wound up getting arrested for beating me, the rest of the local cruise riders would have found me, and I would have wound up skinned alive and thrown into the neck car. I wound up in Tübingen. I figured it'd be safe enough to place to find medical attention and maybe call home. It's not far from Stuttgart, but as a, a huge student community, I figured I could bend into, and the university there was a decent magic department. My ride dropped me off at the university hospital. They patched me up pretty good. Had some questions for me about how I got so beaten up. But I lied and told them I had been mugged, which played nicely into my complete lack of cash, credit, and identification. Glory pauses for a moment. She looks down at the floor, then fixes her eyes on you. She's visibly tense. We're going fast forward through the next few years. I was a kid on the street, and I got by the best I could, doing whatever I had to. The rest you can leave up to your imagination. Good. Yeah, you can imagine what she did to survive, so... Uh, you did what you had to, uh, had to. I'm no stranger to that myself. I don't think anyone working in the shadows is. She nods. I figured you'd understand. So anyway, I lived on the streets for a few years. Got used to being hungry all the time and got used to being rained on. Got it. I was painfully aware that I had magical talents, but without any kind of training or guidance, I didn't really know how to use or develop them. Truth be told, they scared me, so I was more or less ignored them. So it just sort of went like that until a few days after my 17th birthday. Then I met Mata and everything changed. Mata was a sweet girl. At first I took her for a street kid like me. Her clothes were a little ratty, and she seemed comfortable being near me. But she also looked well-fed and happy, and those were two things I hadn't been in years. She started hanging out, and before I knew it, there was happening. I was in love. There was a genuine attraction between Mata and me, I think. But I also thought that a lot of my affection for her came from the fact that she was the first person in years to give a damn about me. She cared, and I loved her for that. Glory pauses. She looks flustered. Her composure cracked. Keep going, Glory. Yeah. No, bringing out old loves, you know, and all that. She stares at you for a beat and then nods. A few ragged breaths later, she continues. Mata told me about the place where she'd been hanging out. She invited me to join her. It was called Fustel, the fireplace, and it was sort of a commune for depressed, disposed youth. 
It turns out that a lot of the street kids I'd known over the years had moved there. The way they'd been disper disappeared, I assumed they'd been kidnapped or killed, or had gone back to their parents, but the they were there. I remember being kind of angry about it, like, how did everybody get the memo about this but me? Marta claimed, calmed me down and she was good at helping me through, work through my feelings, and I wound up following her to Fristel. To a street kid, it was basically paradise. The owner, I, uh, a guy named Harrow, had set up this little farm just outside Tübingen in the Schönenburg Forest. The Schönenburg is officially a nature park, but not many people go there nowadays. Too much fear the paranormal animals, I guess. Anyway, park or not, it was plenty big enough for us to hide in. It was also safe and pretty, and the farm was well stocked with food. Most importantly, Fustel gave us a sense of community and stability that we never had on the street. We loved Harrow for that. He became like a so good father to us. Glory pauses again, and you recognize the distinctive flush in her cheeks. She seems to have come out of her reverie once again. That's enough for now. I need to process all this, and I don't want to continue forward until I've had the chance to do that. I know that all this happened years ago, and I, it's, I guess it's still pretty raw to me. So I guess... I'm going to ask you to give me some space for a while. She turns away and Frost begins to creep back at her voice. We can pick it up later. <laughs> Man. She's had a life. Well, let's, uh, let's talk to Amsel and see what. how about that, about the house. Blackwire, welcome back. I have news for you. In your absence, I've been looking into the Harfield Manor. Whatever Fershving is up to is both large-scale and well-funded. I've uncovered a money trail leading from holding companies all over the world to an offshore fund with a dummy address. From there, all of that freshly laundered money flows directly into the Harfield uh, estate. Wait a second, why would the dragon have investors? That doesn't make sense. It's doubtful that the Firewings pawns even know that their money's going. This is typical of dark kind of plots. Uncover a stream of money flowing behind the scenes, and there's a fair chance that you'll find a dragon at the receiving end of it. To a dragon, conspiracy is second nature, just like a deity. But F First Ring was different. She didn't scheme or plot, she acted. Yes, and look at where it got her. When the Firewing launched her attack on humanity, it was an act of hubris. She lashed out because she didn't consider our species to be a threat. It would be equally hubristic for us to assume that she would will make the same mistake twice. I mean, dragons could take over the world. I mean, have you not seen Reign of Fire? I will continue digging into this wall, and the team tackle your next run. With luck, I have more information to share upon your return. Sounds good, Paul. One last thing, Blackwire. Elite was able to restore the readable surface of one of the Green Winter's DVDs. If you'd like to take a look, you'll find it sitting beside the uh, player. Just one of them? She's still working on others. Many of them are extensively damaged, and getting anything out of them is proving to be quite a chore. She's told them that she'd be in touch when she makes any necessary headway. Thanks, Paul. Why don't she just use a disc buffer? <coughs> Anyway, yeah, we can watch one of the DVDs now. Uh, okay. Well, the second DVD. Uh, play track one. Let's see. Uh, let's see. The software of the winning... So winning. Spain DVD is punctuated by occasional rattling sound. The scratch LCD display comes to life and the menu fills the screen. Play track one. Screen goes black for a moment. The Tim Green... Went, uh, then Green Winters appears on the screen. The timestamp on the video reads... Uh, 2054 11 11. All right, as I said in my last recording, I've been having trouble finding hard facts on first ring, so I thought I'd open up things a bit. Let me see what the rumor mill has to say. The screen jumps and Winters appears in a different location. He is now clutching a mug of soy calf in both hands, and there, under, there are bags under his eyes. Well, that was enlightening, assuming that any of it is true, that is. So for the past five year, hours, I've been poking around some of the crazier French theories related to the dragons and the SOX. As a reminder, the SOX is an irradiated wasteland between France and Germany. Got zoned off back in 08 after the Cantonom GAU reactor meltdown. Anyway, there are all kinds of rumors floating around, uh, around the about the place. I've heard stories about a walled city in there that operates on the survival of the fittest kill or be killed basis. Sort of like a nightmare invasion of Berlin, or version of Berlin. All the anarchy, but none of the stability that the F state provides. The radiation, poison, cancer, and mana pollution are just the icing on the cake. So when Adrian helped the Luftwaffe shoot first wing down, she crashed into the SOX. That much is well known. What isn't as well known are the modern day myths that arise from ever since, and tonight I've heard an earful. I chatted up a girl who claimed to be a ghost rat. That's a smuggler that operates in the SOX. She told me about a dragon cult called the Disciples of the Cleaning Fire. Apparently these cultists worship some sort of radioactive ghost dragon. Could be first wing. Or it could be nothing, but it's worth digging into all the same. Another thing that my little ghost rat told me, the popular rumor in the SOX is that first wing's astral form was, I guess you'd say, mutated by all that background radiation. Some of the globe punks out there say that she's shed, out, uh, shed her body like an old coat. Others say that she's trapped, doomed to languish in an intangible radioactive ghost. <coughs> I don't know how much credence to give to any of this. After all, I don't have any proof that my ghost rat is even a ghost rat. She might be 
But then she could be also running the mill glow punk. Or maybe she's just yanking my chain and she's never been in the SOX at all. Who knows? Well, it's food for thought anyway. I don't know whether the thought of some radioactive ghost dragon thing in my sc is scarier than a genuine dragon, but it's interesting all the same. Now the question is, why did this get me any closer to finding Adrian? I'm going to go on a limb and say no, but you never can tell. By the way, most of these DVDs where you'll have like... You could skip these and, and go on with the story because they're not majorly important. So, Anyway, track two. All right, this one is 2054-1112. All right, let's continue thinking outside the box. After the Dragonfall, the great dragon Kalkstein came flying into SOX to rescue the Firewing, but he was driven off by, off some say killed by Wolfree and Nibblehair. Wolfree is the dragon that helped us in the previous game. Or indirectly, anyway. So what What if there was another dragon involved all of this? Winters grabs a thick, leather-bound tome from a shelf behind him, licks a finger, and begins to leaf through it. All right, well, so let's run down the list of major dragons that could be helping her. First off, there's Golden Worm Wolfrey, the CEO of Ciderkrupp, and quite possibly the single most dangerous being on Earth. Wolfrey's a local boy, so he'd be in a position to help First Ring. He certainly has the financial capability to help her. He could send a small army to SOX if he wanted to. So he's definitely got the means, but I can't see how he's got the... He had the motive... He actively prevented the Firewing rescue back in 2012, after all. Same thing is true for Nib and Hare, so let's scratch the both of them off the list. He flips the page, frowning. We've got Aiden, the great Shrush, a Shrush. He's operating out of Turkey. By all accounts, he's not a fan of Lofri. They're actively competing for territory in the Middle East, so I suppose that could be considered a motive. Reviving the Firewing could cause a problem for the Golden Worm, but would he risk a war with Sator Krupp by st straying, uh, straying out into Lofri's territory? Again, I don't think it's likely. He turns to another page. There's Celadir out Wales. He's pretty heavily invested in Transineuronet. So he's got the money, but he's too busy dealing with the BTL killer scandal that Transi is going through out in London to get his claws during the SOX flips. Dunk, uh, Dunk, uh, Dunk Helzon out in the UCAS. That's uh, America, by the way, for those who are curious. Um, he pauses, shakes his head, then he slams the tome shut. No, nah, this is a waste of time. The more I think about it, the more convinced I am the Firewing is acting alone. Dragons don't cooperate unless they have a, absolutely have to. After all, why bother making nice with your equals when you've got an e entire planet full of pawns at your disposal? They don't need to work together. They just have to. They have to us to exploit. All right, track three. While this track does load, it's clearly corrupted. The screen fills with meaningless streams of text. There are some numbers like old and stuff like that, but I'm not going to read all that out, so... Alright, track four. File, the file is partially garbled. You can recognize a key word, uh, some, uh, recognize a few key words here, but they're interspersed amidst a solid block of corrupted text. Beauclair. Uh, my big beer. Still searching for Firewing. Square to I will find you. Uh, it's the last old C ad. Uh, getting any cloak. Swear to Ash. Research. Uh, and I know who yeah that's it uh, the file's corrupted the screen files with the or sorry the next track file fills with meaningless assortment of ASCII characters uh, I don't think there's anything I can actually read there's like old and add and stuff like that but yeah and finally track 6 the screen goes black and the same digital chime that you heard on the Dragonfall DVD plays again a crackle of static fills the air followed by the same not now familiar electronic whine a few minutes later the display goes live Beauclair looks haggard. His eyes are heavily bagged and bloodshot. His hair is must. He holds a cigarette in his steady hands. Hubby, it's me. I can't sleep. I don't know where you are. Out having fun, no doubt. Maybe flitting with one of those unattainable beauties that you're always chasing. He tries to smile, but quickly disappears. He takes a drag off on his cigarette. That's good. I want you to live a pleasant normal life. After all, one of us should. Beauclair rubs his eyes. I can still smell the smoke on me. It's almost a year later, and I can still taste the stench of burning corpses. When I sleep, I can hear the sirens and the screams. There is no sound in this world as horrible as a burning victim screams. The doctors would call this PTSD, I'm sure. They'd have me in therapy, maybe dose me up on S SRIs, like they do to the veteran soldiers. He chuckles and takes another drag. Quite a story for the tabloids, the great dragon slayer, Adrian Vauclair, mentally incapable of wrestling with his own demons. He shakes his head. No, no therapy for me. Certainly no medication. I have a reputation to live up to. However poorly de deserved it is, however little I want it. He pauses, steps out of the cigarette. The dragon is still alive, honey. Of that I am certain. One day I will find her, and then perhaps I'll be able to sleep through the night. The display goes black, and the background whine fades away. A moment later, find yourself disposed back at the menu screen. Yeah, ejected. All right, we're done with that. So, all right, before we call it an episode, let's look at our mission menu, and then talk to, and we'll talk to everyone in town next time.
The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fills the screen. We got a new message. All right, let's read the message. Uh, hijack shipments. Uh, Met Bakunari Blackwire. If you value your new hardware coming into the Kresenbauer, we need to talk. One of the, my weapon shipments was hijacked by a local gang. I can promise 500 new yen, and if you can recover the shipment, I'll have some new gear on that shelf. Come see me for the details. Yeah, some of the missions in the game aren't major, but if you do them, you'll get new new stock, extra money, stuff like that. So it's usually worth doing them, unless you just want to do the plot, which you can beat the game without it. It just depends on the difficulty and how much you're willing to go into the game. So check the jobs directory. Claim payment for the humanist, uh, humanist data steal. You submit the job as finished and await your client's response. A few minutes later, a message pops onto the screen. Uh, yeah, most of the, we get 3,750 of it. Uh, if you uh, did the... Um, conversation with with uh, him uh, you would have gotten 4,000 I believe uh, but yeah the rest of it the 20,000 or whatever goes to uh, uh, goes to uh, Alice's fund so Samuel Black Beckenbauer to Blackwire here's your payment as promised Beckenbauer a moment later second message pops into your inbox your payment details payment from client 22,500 deduction for crew salary 6,000 ammunitions and resupply costs 1,500 automatic deductions for Alice fund 11,250. Remainder sent to Blackwire's account, 3,550. Payment transfer complete. Yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, view pen of active jobs. Pending uh, the the extraction one. Amsel's face winks into onto the screen. Black, Blackwire, here you'll find the complete transcript of my conversation with Herr Schmidt, a potential client. As you will see, the details of the job are a bit more big uh, than I would like, but the payout is quite substantial. After reading the transcript, you may choose whether or not to accept the job. If you respond in the affirmative, a client will be notified. I'll make necessary preparations for the run. One other thing, Herr Schmidt provided me with a device to assist you on the run. He calls it a little black box. Apparently, it can be used to compromise the power and security systems of the run. If you opt to take the job, be sure to take it with you. Amsel's image flickers, then winks away. A moment later, a glowing blue text fills begins to scroll up from the bottom of the screen. Or field, sorry. Greetings, Herr Amsel. I trust that this connection is secure. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Or naturally, um, call me Herr Schmidt. Very well, Herr Schmidt. Will you have some business for me? Indeed, I have a job for your team. A simple matter, judging by what I've heard of your team. I imagine they will be well suited to the task. Go on. The interests that I represent have learned that AG Kimi Europa is working on a company-wide project. Something very secretive, very new. Reliable sources inform me that they'll keep, they're keeping a working prototype of this new venture at the Berlin facility. I see, and your employers wish us to acquire this prototype for them? Naturally. What's this project? If you want my team to grab the prototype for you, then you know what they're looking for. I'm not at liberty to say. I can tell you that the prototype has been branded the Mark IV, or Mark VI, sorry. I could also tell you that the team will find it on the 25th floor of the Berlin facility in the office of one Albrecht Hoshoffer. Further, I can assist your team in disabling the building security and gaining access to the 24th floor. From there, however, they'll be on their own. Such vagueness can be dangerous, Herr Schmidt. I will not commit my team to run without better understanding what the job entails. Facing such danger is the purpose of Shadowrunners, Herr Amsel. Your team will be rewarded handsomely for their services. My employers have set aside 20,000 yen for the job. Consider it hazard pay if you wish. Make a 25,000 yen or look somewhere else. 22,500 yen. Final offer. Very well. I'll pass your offer on to my team. Are, you, are there any other further details you can provide? Hushoffer's office will be locked behind a vault door. The lock is old-fashioned, of the mechanical variety. I'll provide your team with a copy of the key. I will also supply you with a little black box, a solid-state device that your team can use to override a variety of building systems. Your uh, team will enter through the facility's underground garage. When your team has acquired the Mark VI, MK6, they'll have exit through the same garage. I'll have a van waiting for them to extract them. Thank you, Herr Schmidt. I'll pass your offer on to the team. Goodbye, Herr Hamsel. The field of disappears. A single line of text pops in the center of the screen, taking its place. Accept the job, yes or no? Yeah, might as well. Run accepted. Client notification sent. You take the little black box from the desk and pocket it before running, t returning your attention to the screen. All right, everything's active now. Uh, let's see. And then we, yeah, we can check the. Whoops. Don't check that. Check the Alice fund. Yeah, still got five, fifty thousand to go. So yeah, we're not p p pausing our own money. Thank you very much. So. You can if you want to. You could save like a ton of money and just like skip to the next section, but you kind of want to gain experience and all this other stuff, so I don't know why you do that. So, um, Let's see what the uh, BBS has to say right now. Uh, let's see. Keyword. Uh, let's see. Threads. Transy Highlander. Best new deck. 
Uh, just got one of those from Transnet or Net Rep. Wants me to sell them in my store, so I took the puppy for a test drive. Signal quality is insane. Makes for a huge difference in comfort uh, decking fatigue. I can stay jacked in for hours and feel fine. Last session I had to set a timer just so I wouldn't forget to eat. The specs on that thing look impressive. I'm an allegiance man. Does the co comfort really make that much of a difference? My decks are generally beaters anyway. Uh, allegiance, what are you doing with that thing? Playing video games? Any serious decking is going to require any more horsepower than that can push, even overclocked. This is just making fun of people who do overdecked computers and stuff like that, built their own, which the computer I'm playing on is pre or is built myself, so it's actually not that hard to do, really. Uh, only a crappy decker blames their gear. I just do fine, thanks. Relumens, how much is tr it's Transit paying you to post this shice on here? No, we're posting that thread. Threat, help, drowning in junk messages. Oi, chummas, I couldn't help every time I jack in the matrix these days. I'm flooded with junk mail. There's so much of it. I can't even see anyone that can help me. Great, another newbie thinks he's on a tech support board. Hey, stuff it. I want to ask, but I'm desperate. I can't deck like this. All right, Thunder, calm down. Sounds like uh, AdBot is keyed into your deck. Been poking around anywhere sketchy lately? I don't need details. A simple yes or no will do. No bandit have been anywhere like that. I swear, please help me. What you want to bet he gave his personal info to some scam site? I'll bet you 10 to 1 odds. No, I don't think so. All I've done was make an online dating profile. Let me guess, meet and make? Or meet mate? How'd you guess? That's not a real dating site, Thunder. It's a place where desperate people go to get infected with malware. But what do I do? How do I make it stop? I don't know, buy a new deck? Best of luck. <laughs> Ouch. No, that's just how it is. Sometimes you'll get really, you'll get a lot of useful help from the from the tech world, and then sometimes you'll just they'll just mess with you, so. All right, well, we've talked to our teammates. We learned a little bit more about them, perhaps more than we expected, but perhaps not enough. But uh, there's more to do. But uh, how's everyone in town dealing? Will we finally get that droid we've been looking for? The answer will depress you. We'll find out what happens next time in the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.